My name is Andre Eric Msute, a faculty member in the Department of Mass Communication, Skyline University in Nigeria. And today, we'll be discussing research process and procedure. This is fundamental because research is fundamental in scholarship. And most of the time, both students and faculty members find it very difficult in conducting a proper research. And that is why we are here to discuss some of the process and procedures that are involved in conducting a proper research. So, what is research? Research is a systematic um, process of ascertaining answers to a particular problem. Now, we are going to look at the steps that are involved in conducting a research. Now, step number one, selecting a research topic. This is very important. And selecting a research is a concern for many beginner, beginning researchers, especially those writing a 10 papers, thesis, and dissertations. The problem is to know where to start. Fortunately, there are virtually unlimited sources available in sourcing for a research topic. Number one, academic journals, magazines, research summaries or abstract, everyday situation, data archives, and internet. So all these things are sources of research. You can select a topic. For academic journals, you go through them and you get viable research topics, magazine, and all of that. Now, step two, determination of topic relevance. After selecting a topic, you need to know whether the topic is researchable or not. And how do you determine whether a topic is researchable or now, you need to answer the eight basic questions identified by Wimmer and Dominic. And number one, is the topic too narrow or too broad? Number two, can the problem be investigated? Three, can the data be analyzed? Four, is the problem significant? Five, can the result of the study be generalized? And six, what cost and time are involved in the study? Seven, is the plan approach appropriate to the study? And eight, is there any potential harm to the subject? After you identify a research topic, you need to answer the eight basic questions identified by Wilma and Domini so that you will know that you are able or you are ready to embark on that research project. So the next step is the background to the study. As a researcher, you need to articulate your background to the study. And it is called background to the study, not background of the study. You need to understand the appropriate um, preposition that you will use here. When you say of, of refers to connection or something that is relating to something. But when you say to, it simply refers to what direction. And remember that in the background to the study, you are going to direct your readers on how do you want to achieve this study? How do you want to embark on this study? What are the things that you need to know for you to be able to establish this study? So it is background to the study. So background to the study is always written so that it will arrest the attention of the reader. And your background to the study should be very convincing so that readers can believe that what you are about to undertake you are conversant with it. And basically, background to the study is written in two perspectives. Number one is either general to specific or specific to general. And when I talk of general to specific, here you can start your study by looking at a general um, perspective on the subject matter, or you look at the issue from a broader perspective. Then you narrow it down to the scope of your study. Or you can decide to start from um, specific to general, where you start from the scope of your study and then you go to a broader perspective. So these are two traditional ways by which a, research, a researcher should be able to establish or articulate a background to the study. All right, step four is problem statement and not statement of the problem. So in articulating or establishing your problem statement, the researcher needs to have access to literature. 
because you are going to identify a missing gap in the literature which at the end you are going to fill up the gap so if you expose yourself to the literature you can be able to identify the lacuna in the literature and that will automatically constitute the problem statement step five is aim of the study and please don't make a mistake of adding s to aim because in any research study you have one aim which is going to be a broad aim that you attend to achieve in the study so it is based on this broad aim that you carve out your objectives of the study so the aim is the purpose of the study so in conducting a research you must have a broad aim that you want to achieve here you emphasize on what is going to be accomplished not how it is going to be accomplished for example if a researcher is interested in doing a comparative analysis of maybe hate speech in the 2015 and 2019 general election the aim of the study could be that the research is to analyze the manifestation of hate speech in the 2015 and 2019 general election so basically sometimes the aim is taken from the topic of the uh, research step six is the objectives of the study and when we talk about the objectives of the study is what the study said to achieve what do you want to achieve or to actualize in the context of conducting that particular study then this basically becomes the objectives of the study and the objectives they are specific in the case of aim of the study they are general but in the case of objective they are specific and they come in number it could be one two three depending on how many objectives that you want to establish in the course of conducting that research and in step seven we have what is called research question and what are research questions research questions are templates that guide you to achieve the objectives of the study they are the basic tools of scientific inquiry they guide you as a researcher they serve as a template that you can be able to follow at the end so that you can be able to achieve the essence of the study so basically you normally turn your objectives to research question it is the objectives of the study that are turned to research question the objectives they comes in statement why research question comes in form of what and questions so i cite the research question step eight is the significance of the study and when we talk of significance of the study it is simply the importance of the study remember that each study you are going to conduct people should be able to benefit from that study and basically significant is measured at five levels one significance to the methodology as a researcher to what extent is that study significance in terms of methodology remember that there are different methodological approaches why do you choose to maybe settle down with maybe quantitative or qualitative approach or research method so you must establish why is the study significance to that particular method the second one is significance to theoretical framework there are 1001 theories why do you decide to select a particular theory that will serve the goal of your study the next one is significance to you as a researcher. Any uh, research that you are conducting, you must bear it in mind that that research must have significance to you as a researcher. What are you going to benefit from the outcome of the research? And four is significance to the body of knowledge. Remember that you are not the first person that's dis disverging a particular area. So many research has been conducted in that area. So your own research is going to be a kind of add up to the already existing literature in the area so you must make sure that your research is going to contribute to the existing body of knowledge in that particular area and next is significance to what to the society ask yourself is the society going to benefit from the outcome of the study if no then this topic is not worth investigating now the step nine is the scope of the study now when we talk of the scope is the area that you are going to cover in your study and there are different parameters that we use in measuring the scope of a study number one is 
the scope of a study within the time frame. From which time? Remember that most students, they have a timeline. Maybe in a semester you have four months and you are going to conduct a study within the time frame. So you must know that the particular topic you are going to work on should be time bound so that from so so time you can be able to finish your study. Now you also articulate to establish your scope of study within the geographical scope. Which geographical area is going to constitute the scope of your study? You must clearly um, establish this. Number three is the demographical uh, scope. Who and who is going to be part of the study? Are individuals involved in the study? You need to state this. And then theoretical scope. There are so many theories. What do you say to on this theory? Maybe it's perhaps because the theory constitutes part of the study. And lastly is what? Methodological scope. You need to also establish why are you adapting a particular method that could serve as this uh, scope of the study. And in step 10, we have limitation to the study and not limitation of the study, limitation to the study. Now in limitation, these are the challenges that you are going to encounter in the course of conducting that particular study. And remember that transportation, money, time, they are not part of limitation because for you to be able to uh, start investigating that problem, you have already answered the eight questions identified by Wilma and Dominic in the previous um, slide that we have discussed. So, and number six question on that uh, eight question says, what cost and time are involved in the study. So you have already addressed this question. So don't come and tell your uh, supervisors at the end that I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have uh, maybe resources to embark on this study. You have already answered this question. So you should be able to conduct the study. And when we talk of limitation, basically limitation should be originated from theoretical and methodological school because there is no single theory that has no uh, shortcoming. There are so many theories, but sometimes you tend to see that some of these theories have uh, disadvantages. So you can use these shortcomings as limitation to the study. Also, in terms of methodological approach, each research method you pick, it has some strengths and weaknesses. So some of the weaknesses of those methodology will also constitute limitation to the study. Step 10 is operational definition of key terms. As a researcher, you need to focus on some of these uh, concepts. You need to explain them. And this concept should be operationalized or should be defined within the context of the study. You need a working definition based on your own understanding on how these terms can be applied within the context of your study. Here, we don't use dictionary meaning or scholarly definition. Here, you are going to have a working definition on how those terms are being used or applied in the context of your own study. And in step 11 is the literature review. And basically when we talk of literature review, it simply entails consulting previous studies that has direct, uh, direct bearing to the subject matter. Here you are going to fall back on the existing literature so that you can be able to analyze the current study. And literature review is basically divided into three components. First is conceptual review. At the level of conceptual review, you are going to look at some of the concepts that are related to your study. Then you define them or you examine them within the context of scholarly arguments. Then the next is empirical review. Here you are going to focus basically on some of the related literature that have been conducted in that particular area. Here you look at studies that have been done by previous researchers in the area. What method do they use? What um, theory do they adopt in their previous studies? What are the basic findings? What are their conclusions and recommendations? Then lastly is the theoretical framework. Now you need to anchor your study within the theoretical lens of a particular theory because theory helps you to predict the outcome of the studies. It helps you to explain complex phenomena. So as a researcher, you must locate your study within the context of theoretical framework. You review a theory and in dealing with theories, you have to look at first the proponents of the theory. The theory is established by who and in which year. 
Now, after that, you look at the basic assumption of the theory. What is the theory saying? And then you look at the strength of the theory and then the weaknesses of the theory. Then you establish a nexus, a connection, a link between the theory and the study. Now, academic sources depend on research and publication. And that is Philip Zibado. I'm sure you have learned one or two things in this discussion. First, we look at research process and procedures, and we look at some of the steps that are involved by looking at selecting a research topic, establishing a background to the study, the problem statement, the objectives of the study, the research question, significance of the study, scope of the study, limitations to the study, operational definition of key terms, and literature review. Thank you very much.